Motorhead Garage, the program that each week introduces you to and shows you how to install the latest in exciting and innovative products for your vehicle. Motorhead Garage is presented by NHOU Protective Coatings. Now here's your host, Dave Dobson. This is another edition of Motorhead Garage presented by NHOU Protective Coatings and this is a beautiful Harley Street Glide and it's a great looking bike right out of the box. But if you want to take your motorcycle to the next level, that is where Absolute Custom Cycles comes in. Jason, you're the mastermind behind these bikes. Tell me what you guys do. What's sort of the theme uh, at Absolute Custom Cycle? We take your bike from a stock bike to a piece of art that you drool over. <laughs> and I'm drooling over these. These are magnificent looking bikes and we'll talk about them in particular. I know every shop has a sort of style that they, that they do and they like. So, so how do you describe the style of what you guys do? We do a lot of big wheel baggers, a lot of wide tires. They're, they're new out now. So we do just custom, clean, rideable, Bikes. And rideable is a key. You get so many bikes, you know, with a big wheel like this, and you might look at that and say, that's impossible to ride. You think of the big chopper, the wheel flopping yeah, over every exactly. time you turn it. Uh, how is this different from, from what you'd think? Well, what the, how they're cut and raked, or how the frames are cut and raked, they sit exactly where the stock bike's tire sits on the ground. So you're not heavy on the bars, you're not light on the rear end or none of that. It rides just like that. Your U-turns your may be a little larger. Other than that, they ride the same. You see so many guys, uh, their, their objective is to make the bike look great, but they end up with something that's not really that rideable. Is that How important is rideability to you and to your customers? Rideability is key because there's so many bikes that come in the shop that aren't as rideable, feel like they're going to hurt you or put you down. We try to make sure everything is the way it should be and, and can ride and safely. How does that process start? Are they coming to you with a motorcycle already or just an idea? Sometimes they come with a motorcycle, sometimes they come with an idea. A lot of times they'll come with a, with a picture of what they want and we can render it out of what they may want, use their bike that they have already or have them buy a new bike or find a new bike and we'll build that bike that they, that they bring in. What is the fabrication process like for you guys taking a stock bike and turning it into something like this? This is also a street glide, the same model. Correct. We take the bike, bring the bike in stock, tear it down, motor and frame, cut the frame, rake it, weld it, um, body work the frame, start all your rewiring and, and the process of all your new parts going back onto the bike. And one thing I notice that really stands out to me, you look at the wiring, you know, it's, it's clean and stuff on the Street Glide stock bike, exactly. but you take a look over here and that stuff's not even visible. Yeah, it's all ran through the frame, comes out on each side, the same size that they are on the stock bike. You have, you have wires on the left side and on the right side. You have wiring that comes out of the top of the frame on the left side and the right side. It just cleans it up, makes it look, look nice and neat. Uh, this bike looks fantastic. Tell me, tell me what you've done here. You've got 26, 26 inch wheel, uh, 13 inch rotor, six piston, 13 inch caliper, stretched fairing, inner fairing, outer fairing, stretched tank on it with side covers, stretched rear end, crazy loud stereo. <laughs> That's important. Yeah, it's always important. Yeah. Custom seats, bars, mirrors, and engine components. So really, you've kept the frame. And uh, in the motor. Some of the motor. It's some of the motor. I got it. Well, it looks great. Oh, man, talk about works of art. This is a road glide here, and tell me what you've done with this. Well, fat tires are in now. And they look cool. It took a while for them to come, but they're, they're in full-fledged, and everybody wants a fat tire now. So uh, we started out with a fat tire, front and rear air ride, custom bags, fender, tank, seats, bars, everything. Custom motor, this one come with a 107, now it has a 124 in it. They normally come contrast on the fins, solid black powder coat with red highlights. Really turn out good on that one. That's a great looking bike. And you guys are in North Carolina, but you get folks from all over the place. Yeah, we get them from, from Nova Scotia, Dubai, Iowa, Canada, different parts of Canada. 
all over the place. Well, these bikes are phenomenal. I've seen some great looking ones, but these are out of this world. And if you want the bike of your dreams, check these guys out at AbsoluteCustomCycles.com. We'll be right back with more Motorhead Garage presented by NHOU Protective Coatings right after this. Motorhead Garage, presented by NHOU Protective Coatings, is brought to you by RockAuto.com. All the parts your car will ever need. Magic Creeper, the most versatile creeper ever. Custom Auto Sound, the originator of classic car OEM Fit Radio since 1977. And by NH Oil Undercoating, the official oil-based rust prevention system. Thank you for tuning in to a supercharged edition of Motorhead Garage, presented by NHOU Protective Coatings. This is a Hellcat, and it's the holy grail of American muscle cars these days. And to get 700 horsepower, you don't need a toolbox, you just need a wallet. And it's great right out of the box, AJ, but if you start adding power, things kind of start to go wonky on you. Where do things start to go wrong? First thing we start with is the differential. And that's where the power actually gets to the ground. Yeah, so what most guys do, the first thing they want to do is put sticky tires on the car, go to their local drag strip, and get that good burnout, and try to put it all down. And that piece right there gives it up. This is the weak link. That's the weak link. And so, you know, how much power are we talking? Does it do that with stock power? If you treat it right, if you're careful with it, you can get away with the 800 to 850 wheel horsepower range. So that's pretty good. And my first inkling is if things start to go wrong here is to start to add bracing. Yes, so uh, what we have here is basically a third mount to brace the back of the differential where in the event of a failure, uh, it doesn't end up falling out of the car. Well, the stock vehicle starts with 700 horsepower, like I mentioned, and you ramped it up to 1,000 or so, and you found out the hard way that that's a little too much power for the stock diff. Yeah, so we were roughly 1,000 at the wheels, and uh, we went to a really good sticky track and went to get that launch, and this happened. That's the piece right there. This is the piece. This is the actual piece out of that vehicle. The school of hard knocks. Oh, <laughs> yeah, we ran it over, you know, 400-mile car. Fantastic. Just ran the differential over, and... We didn't get off easy on that one. That was about 13,000 in damage on that one. Oh, that was painful in the beginning, but then it led you to a solution to that problem because other people were having the same issues as well. So what did you come up with? Our solution was what you see right here. This is our billet differential. It's a stock replacement. Uh, it's made out of 6061 T6 aluminum. The case is designed to take about double the torque load as a stock case. And we also added provisions on it for the brace as well to give you some extra security. And right now, uh, we're putting about 1,500 horsepower through this in our own test car, and uh, we're able to keep it in the car. Torque-wise, how much are we talking stock versus your unit here? It's double. Um, so this engineering analysis that we did on this when it was designed, these ears will take about 12,000 foot-pounds of torque compared to these that take roughly about six. <laughs> And of course, that's the casing that you guys make. What's on the inside? So on the inside, we source all brand new components right from Chrysler. We use those components inside the differential so it has a stock feel when the differential's in the car and you're driving your family around. It didn't turn it into a race car. Well, an installation couldn't be easier. Jim, you headed it up yesterday, and of course, the first thing is to take the old differential out. So what's the first thing we have to do? Well, if the differential hasn't already come out itself, the first thing we're going to want to do is take the exhaust down. The exhaust on uh, these vehicles are pretty simple to do, a couple clips, straightforward, so 202 sensor should be unplugged, and the whole thing can fall out. Next, we're removing the drive shaft. What's involved with that? Drive shaft is also fairly simple. You just gotta have the right tools. There's a Torx bit and a couple of members holding the center hanger. You just remove that, roll it either forward or back to get to the top section of the bolts, and that should also come right up, fairly simple. And that lets us get to the differential itself now. What's the procedure there? So that gets a little more trickier now. If you might have some broken components, might be some grease slung everywhere. You might have some axle damage, some drive shaft damage. All that stuff being said aside, there's two bolts on the back of the housing you're gonna to wanna to loosen. There's two bolts uh, going up, which are like the front ears of the whole housing. As you start removing it, the differential is gonna start coming forward leave the back bolts in place, and the front diff should come down. And you start popping one of the axles out at that point. Yep, the one axle is going to start to come out. You compress the other side, and as you can fully remove one side of the axle, you should be able to get uh, the other side axle off and the differential out. All right, now on to the installation of the new differential, starting with bushings. Now, how are these different than the stock bushings? So the kit is going to come with a set of polyurethane bushings. They're a little beefier than the factory ones. You're going to just press them in. You could do it with a nice mallet, maybe a little bit of lubrication on it. And before you're ready to do the install, it's a good idea to start getting your fluid in there and setting that up so it just makes it for a cleaner installation down the road. Reversing the procedure now with the new differential, axles going in and then to the plates. 
Yep. You're going to have your one axle that you was the last one to come out. That'll be the first one to go in. As you start gently bringing it up, you'll be able to slide in the other axle, bring it up a little bit further, and you should be able to get to your spot of mounting. You can start off simply just by putting the two front ones in just to kind of get you a, an idea of where it's going to sit and slowly start working in your back bolts. Once that all gets tightened up, you should be in a good spot to start putting in the rest of the accessories, drive shaft, exhaust hangers. You guys have done this a bunch, so it didn't take you too long, but how long does a typical installation take? Typical installation, if you have a lift and have all the tools ready, should be about three to four hours. There have been instances where we've done this track side, you know, to help out either customers or our own vehicles. With two guys, you can get it done a little bit quicker with some basic hand tools. It's really not a very difficult installation to do. Well, a little bit of work in the beginning is gonna save you a whole lot of heartache on the back end. Check out these guys on the web. We'll be right back with more Motorhead Garage presented by NHOU Protective Coatings right after this. Motorhead Garage presented by NHOU Protective Coatings coming to you from Borla Commerce Park. You are rocking and rolling with Motorhead Garage presented by NHOU Protective Coatings. Boy, what it must have been like to cruise around in this car in 1963. It's a Buick Riviera, it's a luxury cruiser, and I tell you what, this one is beautiful. It's all original and that's great, except for one thing. It has the original stereo in it as well. And I can tell you, driving a car like this feels cool, but it doesn't sound so great when you're listening to one of those little stereos through a couple little tiny speakers on the dash. So. There is a solution to that thanks to Custom Auto Sound. You can upgrade your stereo and have all the modern conveniences and still have that classic look. Custom Auto Sound has units like this that look just like the original equipment, have the old push buttons, but this is actually a digital stereo in disguise. And if you want to add a CD player, you can do that too, thanks to the CD1 here from Custom Auto Sound. And I'll tell you what, this thing is heavy. It's not a cheap piece of plastic, it is going to last. Custom Auto Sound does all kinds of testing, endurance testing, they do shake tests, heat and cold tests to make sure these units are going to last as long as your vehicle. Installation is simple. It comes with all the cables you need, all the hardware you need to mount it. Well, I'll tell you what, back in 1963, they weren't messing around here. Metal piece where the heater vent comes out and the, the old bezel, we're not talking the cheap plastic bezels you see a lot today. This thing is solid. This entire car is solid, and naturally it's going to be a cruiser, so uh, they want their tunes, of course, the owner does. And we take our custom auto sound head unit. The great thing is everything is labeled clearly on the back, and when the cables come to you here in the wiring harnesses, they are also clearly labeled. Now, this harness here has an ignition wire. Uh, it also has one that we're not going to use, and that is for the automatic antenna. The owner has chosen not to use that, so we just tape that off, and then uh, one to the battery. And I should mention while we're at it, we should disconnect the battery before we do anything involving the car's electrical system and we have done that so we will take this black harness and plug it into the bottom port here and there's a second harness here and uh, this is all taped together nicely and it, again it all comes organized for you and it all comes labeled so there's not any guesswork when it comes to your car stereo system when you use custom auto sound and the white one goes in the top there and there are a couple options you have here. Over on this side, we have uh, an MP3 port. This is actually a USB port, if you have something that would connect that way. There's an iPod cable, and then this is for uh, some sort of aux cable, if you have another piece of equipment you want to plug in. Now, the owner has told us that he wants to use the iPod cable, so we will connect that. And he also wanted to connect another device with some RCA cable, so we have that. And there's a lot of options for that here on the back. And we'll use these first two ports for the RCA cables. And it looks like that's sort of a regular aux connector at the end there. So a little, little mini to plug a device in. One more thing to show you here. This is a cable we have for that CD player that we were talking about. So that plugs right in that spot. And you can run that cable. We've run it out here uh, down along the floor. And the owner wants to put it under the passenger seat. And so we'll do that and get it buttoned down later. And there's not much to get it put into the dash here it's a matter of letting those cables hang down so we can access them from the ashtray area remember ashtrays and uh, we can access that later and we put this bezel on the front and custom auto sound takes care of you because they send you lots of washers for the kit and there's first there's this cup that goes onto the stem to uh, trim it out nicely and as many washers as you would need depending on the car and all the washers that it came with here we're going to load it up and We'll put a nut on the end of it to secure those down. And then, just to get that nut down on there, we have a socket, and you can just hand tighten it. That'll get it on there. You do the same thing on the other side. And this is really cool. Custom Auto Sound 
pays lots of attention to detail and these knobs look just like the originals from back in 1963. This is a two-piece job and just push it onto the stem and the crown here goes on top. And boy, I tell you what, folks won't be able to tell that you've got a brand new stereo that has Bluetooth and aux and a CD player as well. And it goes on just like that. We repeat the same thing on the other side and uh, we'll trim all this up and get it all finished off. It is as simple as that. If you want to get one of these for your classic car, you want to have the modern conveniences in your old ride, check them out at customautosound.com. We'll be right back with more Motorhead Garage presented by NHOU Protective Coatings right after this. Motorhead Garage, presented by NHOU Protective Coatings, is brought to you by Shirado Inventions, striving to make life easier. Borla, the world's most winning exhaust. Magic Creeper, the most versatile creeper ever. And by Reduction Boss, Honda and SXS custom gearing. Thanks for cruising along with Motorhead Garage, presented by NHOU Protective Coatings. You know, there's a whole lot of seat covers out there in the aftermarket world, and the ones you can afford, well, chances are they don't look that great in the first place, and they're not going to last you very long. But that has all changed thanks to Aegis. Lawrence, you're the genius behind all of this. Tell me how Aegis is changing this industry. Well, our business idea was to improve someone's car that has shown wear and tear over the years and make a really high quality seat at a real low price. You said there's a couple of kinds of people that are buying seat covers. Right. We really only have two customers. It's a brand new truck, brand new vehicle, and we're going to cover the seat for you. So when you go to sell that in five to six years, you pull it off and the seats look pristine and perfect. Or it's the guy that's got a truck that looks just like this. Yeah, this is disgusting. This is one of our work trucks. So we use this for a lot of different things and you can see that it's past its day and right put a new seat cover and that looks like a brand new seat out of a factory right and remember it's just a cover it is not an upholstery job so you can do it at home it's about a 45 minutes for the first seat and 20 minutes if we were to hide the disgusting seat and there's some features on here that makes it nice this particular model that you're looking at is made out of a neoprene so it's waterproof it's soft it's comfortable and you can slide in and out of your truck really easy or your car but it has a great pocket up here for a cell phone or something like that and on the back of the seat we added a map pocket so not only do we give you the seat seat bottom, the seat back, we also throw in the headrests all to match. You're talking right about 200 bucks for a pair. That's not a single seat, single headrest. That's for two seats and two headrest covers. And this looks like a custom upholstery job. What would that cost me if I'm to get an old seat reupholstered? And it's about $800 to get a single seat upholstered. And all you guys are coming from the hot rod side understand that completely. This whole diamond, it has a roots in the hot rods, but it's modern day. Like all the new Mercedes and Bentleys are even running with this. We also have a leatherette. It's a smooth type of leather, but it's faux leather, so it cleans off easily and it doesn't crack in time. It wears quite well. So even though it's the same stitch pattern, it's a completely different material. So this material wears really well. If you have a heated option on your seats, the heat comes right through. There's no problem. If you have air conditioning, type of seats or what some of the newer trucks do, then you do limit the air. It cuts it down by 50%, but in heat, it's fantastic. It cleans off well with a cotton cloth. You can take any stains off whatsoever. And I don't know if you can catch this kind of little miniature perforations, but that's what allows the heat to come through. And then what we do that is different than any other cover company is that, first of all, we come with a high grade polyurethane type of material, PU for short, with the PVC uh, French binding, that's the red cord right there. And then from the back side, you only see a very soft Trico fabric. And this fabric does not harm your original seats. Most cars have a much better looking material than this particular truck that we have as a donor seat. Thank goodness. And so the whole point here is that it doesn't rough it up, doesn't, doesn't chafe it in any way. And then we have a memory foam that's bonded between the polyurethane and this material that you're looking in that off-white color. And then you can see all the seams are all double-butted seams and a lot of them are covered on the most practical backside there. But the real point that I'd like to talk about is the width of our straps and the quality of our straps. So we use a combination of the straps and webbing and they go from front to back, 
back to front, side to side, then we use a Velcro strap on the side, comes over and overlays on it. So our seats obviously look great. It looks like a professional upholstery place at a value of around 800 or so dollars, but you're getting two for a couple hundred bucks. I love it, and compared to some of the stock ones we've seen, we've got one here on this old Jeep, and uh, the straps on that thing are, are almost non-existent after two years, and that thing's already worn out, this is gonna last you a long, long time. Absolutely correct. That's our way of doing things that make Aegis cover different than anybody else. All right, that's the leatherette, and we've seen the neoprene here. Uh, there's another one in the driver's side of the Jeep that looks just like this, and uh, that's like nothing I've ever seen before. What's going on there? Well, what's really cool about this one is called Cool Mesh, and this is an open weave, and it allows the air to go in and out, and it dries quickly, so if you're off-roading or you're wet or you've been fishing or swimming, this one is a great piece of material. The black part here is a Cordura, like a backpack, but this mesh allows the air. And then we also added this really cool bolster that comes down here. No one else has, does this. And this gives you the support of a brand new sports car in your old pickup that you got at home. And these guys thought of everything. If your airbags deploy, there's even a slit on the side held by Velcro and your airbags will deploy perfectly. They're approved by the transportation department and you can check them out at aegiscover.com. That is going to do it for this episode of Motorhead Garage, and we're sure glad you came along. If you have a product you'd like to see on our show, email Jeff at masterstv.com. From our entire crew, we'll see you next time here on Motorhead Garage, presented by NHOU Protective Coatings.